If you're looking to get into the world of data science in Python, there are a few things you absolutely have to know. And one of them is Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks allow you ultimate control over what you do. You have an interactive series of cells that you can edit and modify as you go along. You can perform non-destructive editing using these cells as well, using the advanced preview features. On top of all that, it actually provides really nice error messages for you to quickly debug your code. In this video, I'm gonna assume you've never seen a Jupyter Notebook in your life and walk you through how to create your first notebook, how to create markdown and code cells, teach you how to use all the different parts of the interface, as well as cool things like magic commands and graph rendering. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider like it to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. If you're feeling particularly generous, you could support me further by becoming a member or a patron. All the information you need is in the description below. Here's all that out of the way, let's learn how to use Jupyter Notebooks. So to get started with Jupyter, what you need is a notebook interface. And you could do so on Jupyter's website. You come to jupyter.org and then they have their own interactive uh, notebook environments. What I'm gonna do instead is use Visual Studio Code instead. It has built in um, Jupyter kernel support. I imagine a lot of other IDEs do as well. I'd be very, very surprised if PyCharm didn't, for example. Uh, so you can use your preferred ID if you want, but I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. The differences between all of them are extremely minimal. If there are really any at all, it all works the same. It's all the same standard, uh, so it's all fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and create a file. I'm just going to call it notebook.ipynb, and that is the extension, so IPython Notebook. Jupyter runs on top of something called IPython, which itself runs on top of CPython. It's not an implementation of sorts. It's simply just an interactive Python shell that sits on top of it. Uh, and it, it provides some nice little features as well that are you know, very useful for something like this. So we get given a cell by default, but before we even do that, we need to install our kernel. So if you're on Visual Studio, well, if you're on a Jupyter Online Editor, you don't need to do this. If you're Visual Studio Code, you can come into the terminal and I've already got a virtual environment and everything set up. You do pip install ipy kernel like that. And it's kernel with an E at the end on A. I kept getting confused with that for a long time. And it install everything it needs, including IPython, as you can see, and including all sorts of other stuff that it wants as well. And then we can go up to the corner here. Yours might say select interpreter or select kernel. And um, come in here. And then yours might have like environments or something. I'm getting one called select. Oh yeah, this is the menu you get. So you get Python environments or existing Jupyter server. You want Python environments and then you want to set your Python version. So I'm going to set it to CBR Jupyter, which is the which is the virtual environment I set up for this video. And that will then allow you to, you know, containerize all your things. Again, on the Jupyter Notebook, you'll be given a Python version. I'm not really sure if you can select your Python version straight up. That's one of the nice things about an IDE is you can use what's ever installed on your system. So the first thing we're going to do is show the markdown. So I'm actually going to get rid of this cell and I'm going to create a new markdown cell here because in notebooks, your cells can either be code or they can be text. And this is particularly useful for education settings or in research settings or even just you know, something to put notes in. So this supports full markdown. So I can have a title saying this is the title of my notebook. If we save that, and then if we run it here, uh, it will connect to the kernel, it should then render it. Nope, it's this tick, there we go. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so we can see that this um, title is rendered. I believe it does like tables and all sorts. I think it's like fully markdown compatible. So you can put whatever you want and you can have as many code and markdown cells as you like. So that's pretty nice. If you ever wanna edit it, you can come up here to this pencil button for edit cell and you could just edit what's in here. So I could have like a little subheader that said, and this is a subheader. And then you can click this tick and it will save it there, all good. And we can create a code cell by clicking this button here. And you may need to install some things before you, know, you want to do stuff. So if you want to use pandas, you might want to install that. You might want to install Seaborn, um, which sits on top of matplotlib. And you could do that in the terminal if you want, or if you want to make sure that other people can run this uh, notebook as you'd want to, you can use something called magic commands. So magic commands start with a percentage sign, and then the one we're gonna do is pip install, and I'm gonna install pandas, I'm gonna install pyarrow to prevent a deprecation warning from coming up, 
and then I'm going to install Seaborn as well. Uh, if you don't know what Seaborn is, I made a video about it a long time ago, but it's basically just Matplotlib, but nicer, really. And then to either run the cell, we have a few options. So we have this um, execute above cells, which will execute everything above. We have this one here, which executes this cell and everything below. This one, which splits the cell, which I don't find very useful. We have delete the cell, and we have a few other options here. And on the side, we can just run the cell like this. Or as you can see, we have a little keyboard shortcut. I'm pointing to the screen as so you can see that. So you could either, on Windows, it'd be Control Enter. On Mac, it would be Command Enter. On Linux, it would probably be Control Enter. Or it'd be, or it'd be, I forget if it's Super Enter or Meta Enter. I forget the terminology. But I'm just going to run it like that. And now that will install all of these libraries into uh, our virtual environment that we've selected. So it'll install it into the environment, whichever has the kernel in it. And once that's all done, we'll be able to show you in the terminal. Let's take a little while to do. There we go. It's just finished. You can do pip show pandas. And it's here. So we already have it installed. So that's how you can install um, packages within the notebook, which is particularly useful. If we get another code cell, we can do another magic command. Another one that's particularly useful is matplotlib in line this is more just a standard thing it just makes sure that the um that the graphs and stuff that use in matplotlib are rendered properly uh, there are other options to this as well but a lot of them don't seem to work with visual studio code for whatever reason i'm not sure if that's a problem with this uh or just a problem with jupyter i believe it's a problem with vs code so that's something to keep in mind when you're choosing which editor to use and then we're going to run that as well and then while that's running, we are going to import pandas as PD and then, oops, and then import Seaborn as SNS. And again, we can run that. If we ever wanted to run, you know, uh, everything at once, we can come up here and then we can click this button and then everything will run at once. Uh, I'll show that off a bit more a little bit later. When we're talking about running these cells, though, you will notice that these numbers are appearing next to the cell. I'm not sure how easy that's going to be to see. I might zoom in. We have this number two in square brackets here, and you have this number three in square brackets here. If I were to run this again, we can see that this goes to number four, and this has the execution order. So we can see that this ran first, and then we ran this one afterwards. So that's just useful to keep in mind. You also have the time it took to run. Uh, oh, you also have some more detailed stats there. I didn't know you could do that. So you have the time it took uh, to run the cell, which is always quite nice to have, actually. So if we just load a data set in, I'm going to use one of Seaborn's kind of pre-installed ones. This is why I wanted to use Seaborn. So we do sns.load data set, and then we're going to load the iris data set. And then we are going to do df.head, which prints the first five rows. And then we're going to run that, and we'll see that the result is actually printed for us. Not only is it printed for us, but it's printed in a nice fashion. And that's because the last line of any... Um, cell within a Jupyter notebook is output um, out and we can change the output mode so if we come to these uh, three dots here and we click change presentation we can have it in plain text if we want and this is now the raw pandas output what I would recommend is having uh, the built-in notebook well have, yeah having text html which then outputs things a little bit nicer if you want to suppress the output uh, you can use a semicolon and it will no longer output what was in the cell. I don't find this particularly useful, but you know sometimes it could be useful, but we'll leave that out for now so we can see what we're doing. But this also opens the door to do a few nice things. So because Pandas doesn't do anything in place unless you tell it to, what you could do is you can use this output to, to preview some changes. So if we create another code cell, and then if we wanted to do df.drop, let's say we wanted to drop the species column, and if we need to provide axis equals one, you could use this to actually you know, preview changes. So df.drop returns a data frame, and so the data frame is printed uh, out to us. But you can see the species is gone. But if I was to create another code and do df.head, because pandas hasn't done anything in place, it's still there. So we've done some non-destructive editing, and we've then previewed what was going to happen. So we could do petal width. Um, in here instead, and we can see that species comes back. If you want to save these changes, we could do df equals, and then we can preview them with df.head, and we'll see that the um, 
the petal width column is now totally gone. If we create another code cell and I uh, demonstrate some graphing, the seaborn is quite nice like this because you could do just sns.line plot. And we provide df and then we'll have x equals say cpool length and then y equals cpool width. If you run that cell, then we get a figure that isn't going to display today. Why? <laughs> Why is that happening? There we go. So you can change the presentation mode to image. It must have selected the wrong mode. Okay, if that happens, just go to change presentation. And then I guess, yeah, select the Jupyter Notebook one. That's the one that should have been the default. I'm not sure why it wasn't. Maybe I changed it at some point and didn't change it back. But the Jupyter Notebook renderer should be the default. Uh, so if that ever happens to you, that's how you go and change it. But that will then display your graph here. And then if you want to open it in more detail, you can click uh, that button there, and then you can start moving stuff around, zooming stuff in, and all that jazz. The only thing that VS Code does not support is interactive plots using matplotlib. So if you were to select the, uh, the notebook mode here, if I were to do this, and then run everything again, in a Jupyter, I believe in the online notebook, that will have an interactive plot, and I believe if you do it in a VS Code script, it'll do an interactive plot as well. On this, for some reason, it won't, and I'm, I'm not really sure why. So that's something to keep in mind. And as you can see, we're running the cell and below, and it goes and runs everything in order. And then we get the graph back. Before we finish up here, I just want to go over the rest of this top row for you. So this run all will run every single cell in, or yeah, every single Python cell in uh, the notebook. So it'll run all this pip install stuff, and then it will run everything down here. As you can see, it's going, it's going, and it's already finished because all these operations are quite quick. Uh, sometimes when it says uh, no, you may need to restart the kernel to use outdated packages, I find this isn't always the case, but I do find it is sometimes the case. You could just do that by clicking this restart button and you'll see it has restarting down there. And now when you run, say, this last one, it will give you an error saying SNS is not defined because of restarted the kernel so all the memory has gone. It's not super clear about that because these numbers don't disappear. But there you go. The same thing happens when you click clear all outputs. So this will you know, clear all the outputs. It will clear the numbers this time, but it'll also restart the kernel. Um, so now if we were to do this again, you know, SNS is not defined. But all our libraries are still installed because they were installed to the virtual environment and not specifically to the kernel. You also have these variables up here, which if I run everything, that might have a slightly more useful output. Yeah, so you can see just your variables. Uh, I don't really use this too much, but oh, this is actually quite a useful view. So you can actually uh, see the data frame in one view. Oh, that's quite nice. Okay, I might have to use that more. <laughs> uh, and then you have this outline as well, which just brings another tab up here. And this is more for your markdown stuff. So if you had, you know, multiple subheadings or like an, an actual document in here, then you can, you know, jump to specific parts using this. And then you have this uh, three dots here. So you have export uh, customized notebook layout, which just takes you to some settings, I guess. And then you have your breadcrumbs, which are, I'm not sure what those are actually. Oh, it's just this top bar up here. Okay, so that's all that controls. All right, fine. And you have toggle notebook line numbers as well. Um, uh, so you could put line numbers within your cells if you choose to. If you have any questions about what you've seen here or any ideas or videos you want me to do in the future, make sure to leave a comment down below. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. I also want to thank my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazard Rosherman III for being so generous. And I will see you in the next video where we talk about creating virtual environments within Python 3.12. So I'll I'll show a few ways. So what I was talking about before with this virtual environment that I had set up, I'll show you how I actually set that up. So I'll see you for that.